Konnichiwa everybody, welcome back. So, Mega Drive shooters. So, I don't know, it, when I got into shooters, maybe, I don't know, it was 18 months ago, two years ago maybe. It's a fairly recent passion for me anyway. Um, sort of playing them in any format, to any great length. You know, I dabbled in the past, but they never grabbed me like they have done in this past couple of years. So... At the sort of beginnings of my journey, I sort of made a list of Mega Drive shooters that I would like to try and get. Um, now, unfortunately, the Mega Drive shooters, well, I suppose in many cases, this applies across all formats, but on the Mega Drive, some of the shooters are probably the most expensive games on the Mega Drive. Um... So, you know, I, I sort of played them, all the ones available, emulation, to sort of get an idea of what I might actually want to sort of purchase, if possible. Um, and made this list, as I say. Now, unfortunately, because of the prices, there are some that are so astronomical, there's no hope of ever sort of owning them. Um, to be honest, even if I won the lottery, that's so extortionate, some of them. I, I don't think you can justify spending the money on them. So, I, I decided that the, the games that were too expensive to buy, you know, I wasn't even going to try and think of any way to buy them. I was going to get a repro of them. Um, I know you could argue you can emulate it, what's the point in buying a repro? And fair enough, I understand that sort of thought. Um... And some people frown on repros, which again, fine, each to their own. But for me, it's now different to emulation, you know, in that sense. But I decided these mega expensive games that I would never even buy, even if I could have, you know, afford them through some kind of lottery win, I was going to get repro versions. So, amongst the games I've collected, there are some repros, which if you're into your Mega Drive shooters, you're probably going to guess which ones they are. So, as I said, I made this list, and the last last about two weeks ago, I sort of got to the end of the list, and I bought the last one on my list. Now, it's not a full set by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the ones that interested me most when I went through them all. So, although I've got to the end of my list, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy any more because I might. But I've got all the ones that I set out that I wanted to acquire. So this is kind of my current schmuck, schmuck collection and brief thoughts on it really. Um, I'm not going to go into any depth there because the video is going to be too long. So it's alphabetical order. Um, the first one we've got Arrow Flash. Um, and these are all obviously Japanese. Arrow Flash. Um, now this, I just bought this cart only. I love the cover of this game more than... I, I'm not actually that keen on the game, so... And it's not a cheap game. Um, but I do think the Japanese cover is spectacular. However, it's not cheap. So, I just bought it cart only. Stuck it in a proper box. And printed me out cover. You know, I'm not prepared to pay what it goes for, to be honest. Because, like I say, I'm not really that keen on the game. Um, I'll try and put a bit of footage up here, if I can, of these games. Uh, where possible. We've got the amazing Don Patchy on the Saturn running here. And then, oh, I should have said, I've got Burning Force running here. Um, because, I, you know, it's a grey area, what is and what isn't a shooter. Frankly, you know, you could include the into the screen shooters like Burning Force, Space Area, Afterburner, Thunderblade, I suppose, up to a point. Um, so, you know, I have got some of those as well, but I'm not sort of talking about them here, really, but that's a whole other subject. Anyway, back to the subject in hand. Super Airwolf. Um, not the greatest shooter, I'd have to say, but really interesting and cool. And I did get this at a good price at the time, as I remember. Um, 
no PAL version of this, only American and uh, Japanese. Super Airwolf. And uh, this is another one, Chelnoff. Um, this is actually a PAL version and I've stuck a Japanese cover over the top of it. Uh, it's uh, Atomic Runner is the English v uh, name for it. Um, for once, I don't think the Japanese cover art's a winner here. It's not very good in my opinion. Um, I'll just put the Japanese cover on mine to sort of match all the others really. Um, now again, this isn't really a shooter, really. It's kind of a platform shooter. So we're already in a grey area. Right, now we've got Battle Mania. Uh, now this is the first of the repros. If you're up on your shooters, you know this is expensive. Um, so, like I say, I bought repros for these crazy price games. Um, really fun, interesting shooter, this I think. Um, and beautiful cover art. Like I say, I bought repros. Um, you know, got manual and cart and everything. Um, the boxes that come in are crap, if I'm honest. So, I'll put, I've got some spare genuine cases. So, I'll put it in a genuine case. Again, printed me out of cover. And really don't look too bad on the shelf. Um, just for, I, I, I have row prices down to these crazy price games actually. That Chelnoff is 200 quid roughly. You know, the, an Atomic Runner is much cheaper on PAL. So again, I'd never buy the Japanese version of that. Uh, Battle Mania one, that's about 350 quid plus. You know, if you were to buy a proper one. So, you know. Next up, we've got Battle Mania 2. Um, again, really good. Another fantastic cover art box. Um, I'm not going to open all these up. Um, but like I say, it's, this is another repro, needless to say. Um, this is crazy money. This is a thousand pound plus for a genuine one. So, you know, I'd never entertain it. Hence the repro. Uh, next up, we've got Crying. Uh, now this is the Japanese version of uh, Biohazard Battle, which is actually what this is. Again, I've put the Japanese cover over the PAL version. Uh, this is one I'd like to upgrade. Um, I kind of got this temporary. Uh, not a bad game, Biohazard Battle, in my opinion. Next up, we've got Darwin 4081. Yeah, I have to check there. Uh, not a top tier shooter, I wouldn't say, but interesting. Not a bad box. And I th oh, I've got no manual for that one, unfortunately. But, like I say, it's not a top tier shooter, it's not an expensive one. And then next up, we've got Darius 2. You can't really go wrong with a Darius game. Always makes me think of a uh, fish tank simulator. Uh, oh, shoot. Yeah, that one is complete. I've got to say, a lot of this has come from Craig. Well, a fair amount of it anyway. Um, right, where have we got to? Darius 2. Next up, Dangerous Seed. Another amazing box. Beautiful cover art on this one. Uh, Namco game. Uh, really quite like this. Vertical shooter. Um, in nice and nick as well and in the Namco box um, but yeah another great shooter that one and again that one's Japanese exclusive I believe right next up classic Dai Senpu or what's the pal name uh, Twin Hawk in it yeah I think Twin Hawk fantastic game another beautiful box you can't go wrong with that. I must admit, the tower plan games are pretty much my favourites. Um, and of all this sort of shooting journey I've been on, you know, loads of different formats have got amazing shooters, don't get me wrong. But if I had to pick one, the Mega Drive would be my favourite. Uh, right, now we've got Eliminate Down. Obviously, if you're into your shooters, You'll know this is a repro. Um, this is 
unbelievably crazy money. Currently selling for around 1,200 quid, what I've looked at on eBay. I mean, God knows if they'd get it, but it's listed for 1,200 quid. Um, it's, it's quite good. Again, I keep saying I'm not going to happen, but nevertheless, I'd never pay it. So it was repro all the way for me. Um, I know you can get these kind of, in some cases, you can get these modern sort of limited run re-releases of these games, but are they any better than repro? I mean, they're kind of official repros, aren't they? I, I don't know, it's a bit of a grey area for me. Um, next up, another fantastic game and beautiful cover art. We've got uh, Fire Shark or Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Just amazing box. And again, another fantastic tower plan game. They're just epic. This is another one of them that's sort of easy to shoot, or isn't it? And we've got Final Zone 2. Um, not your traditional shooter, kind of an isometric Explorathon shooter, if you like. Um, again, not top tier, but not a bad game in my opinion. Then we've got Forgotten Worlds. Really, I never played this back in the day, even though it was an early Mega Drive game. But it's really, really good. Um, horizontal scrolling shooter from Capcom, like I say really quite good though I do think the PC Engine version is better uh, next up we've got Fire Mustang again is this Taito this one yeah Taito 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 Taisho Taito for me um, anyway Fire Mustang yeah horizontal sort of warplane shooter don't perhaps look the best but I really quite like that then next up, a classic in my opinion. I did play this back in the day and I did enjoy it. That's Gynog. Fantastic game. And again, beautiful cover art, got to say. Right, next up. Uh, where have we got to? Ah, yeah. Granada X. This is much like kind of Final Zone, kind of an Explorathon shooter, but this is top down. Uh, not a bad game at all. Not in the best of condition, I've got to say, mine, but I think I got it cheap, if I, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a good game, I think. Next up, fantastic game. Gares, Gaiares however you want to say it. Quite a nice box. Though, you could argue the American box is better. Again, there's no... I say there's no PAL version. There is a PAL version. Very rare. Um, but yeah, what an epic horizontal shooter. And then we've got another crazy one. Glylancer. Ridiculously expensive. This is another 300 quid plus game. I couldn't pay it, hence the repro. Um, but it is, it is a good horizontal shooter. But is any game worth 300 quid? I, I, frankly, I don't think it is. Um, right, next up, another fantastic game, Hellfire. Another one, I did play this back in the day as well and, and did enjoy it. Um, really great game. Don't think, and it's quite cheap as well. You can get it, pal, and it's quite cheap. Really, really good game. Uh, next up, we've got Insector X, another beautiful box. This is your insect insect shooter. Um, now, pal, version again. You can get it for the Genesis. Um, I don't know. I feel this one's quite underrated. I, I do think this is quite good. Insector X. Then next up, we've got QQ Tiger, something like that, I've probably butchered that pronunciation. Uh, Tiger Heli, known as, um, no not Tiger Heli, Twin Cobra in, in America. Uh, again, now PAL version. 
another tower plane game um, vertical helicopter shooter really good but it is quite difficult well it is to me anyway but fantastic then we've got now this this is another repro but this is one I would like to track down the original one of purely because it's a tower plan game and I'd like a full set of tower plan genuine Mega Drive shooters um, and we've got Musher Alest I think it's is it tower plan? sure it is um, really good game um, I actually prefer the SNES version if I'm honest and possibly the Master System version however it's a lovely box and again now PAL version uh, but that one is semi attainable that's kind of uh, what I wrote that down yeah that on a good day you can get that for around the 200 quid mark so although it's big money at some point I would like to add the you know upgrade that to the proper version all being well this is another one I've had this actually this shooter I've had this from way back when because I I liked it at the time and we've got Felios um, you don't seem to see this very often it seems quite a rare title whether it's because it's early and it didn't sell I don't know but really good vertical shooter flying on the back of a horse as I say I liked it at the time and I've, I've, I've had this years and years way before I got into shooters properly cracking game now again, this is another one that's kind of easy to shoot, isn't it? So, I kind of think it is. It's an into-the-screen shooter like Space Area and Burning Force. It's Panorama Cotton. Um, again, a repro. Because the original one, currently, around the 500 quid mark, you'd have to be mad. Or rich. And I'm possibly mad, but I'm not rich. Um yeah anyway panorama cotton really good into the into the uh, screen shooter a la space area set in the cotton universe um, I'm not sure it's that well regarded but I do quite like it myself then my personal favorite or one of them we've got Raiden brilliant game I don't think there's a bad version I like the Mega Drive version Not the best of box arts, perhaps, but it's, it's quite nice. But what an amazing game. Again, no PAL version, unfortunately. Now, this is the other one I, I would really like to upgrade to the full, genuine version, rather than this repro. Again, a tower plan game, and we've got a slap fight. Fantastic game, I've got to say. There's own, it's only uh, available in Japan. Um very rare you see it sell for under 300 quid but as i say i would like to to attain it one day so you know although it's it's, it's never going to be cheap you know i i am prepared when the funds allow i would spend the money on this because it's so good and like i say i would like that tower plan set next up Possibly the granddaddy of all shooters. We've got Space Invaders 90. I mean, it's Space Invaders, but you can't go wrong with Space Invaders, can you? Um, no PAL version. Then next up, we've got Super Fantasy Zone. Now, obviously, Sunsoft games from Japan all came in like one third size boxes sort of unique to Sunsoft games um, you know you could go down that road of collecting them easily I did think about it once but soon forgot that um, it annoyed me that, that it didn't sit within the you know the the same box sort of line as the rest of the shelf so I, I made my own box basically um, just so as it sits at the same size and shape as all the others um, Super Fantasy Zone. Cracking game, I've got to say. Um, next up, we've got the game that's peanuts uh, for the PAL version, and it's not cheap for the Japanese version. We've got Steel Empire. Um, 
horizontal airship shooter really really good I think absolute bargain for the PAL version in my opinion if, if you like shooters and you haven't got Empire of Steel the PAL version's cool you want to be picking that up it's, it's really good then we've got Thunder Force 2 one I never really played much of back in the day and I still haven't played it really um, but had to have it obviously you know what's coming next We've got Thunder Force 3. For me, this is the best Thunder Force game. Um, by far. I, I much prefer this one to the others, if I'm honest. Um, again, you can get this pal, but it's, it's crazily like rare and dear, I think. Um, I've not actually looked into it. But I, I don't think it's easy to come across. And then, obviously, we've got Thunder Force 4, which a lot of people think is the best one. And... Um, but for some reason, it's just not for me, this one. Or at least not so far, you know, what I've played of it. I just find the colours too much. I find the backgrounds too busy. Um, I'm not saying the game's rubbish, because obviously it's not. But for me, I just find it a bit too much. And I much prefer Thunder Force 3. But, you know, nevertheless, I mean, it's a good game. Uh, next up, we've got... I would say this is my favourite shooter on the Mega Drive. Um, and again, it's one I played way back in the day. And it's one I thought was great then. And I've kept it, you know, for years since. And had this way before I got into shooters properly. Tatsujin. Or Truxton is the PAL and US name. Um, again, fantastic box art in my opinion. Just love it. I mean... It, it's not an e easy game for me anyway. I, not that any shooter is really, but I think this one's quite tricky. Um, but there's something about this. I just love the weapon system. And I just love how it looks, the sound. I, I just think it's mega. Tatsujin. Uh, and then we've got the last repro now. So we're in the T's. So those who know probably know what's coming. Yes, we've got Twinkle Tail. Um, now, I do think this is really good. However, I don't think it's worth the six to eight hundred quid it sells for on eBay. Hence the repro again. Um, really good. Um, it's kind of. It is a shooter. But it's kind of. I suppose. I don't know. Would you call it like Pocky and Rocky style shooter? Like a walking style shooter a bit like um what's that other one called um elemental master in it then undead line um it's kind of that kind of thing if i got the right title um anyway it's really good um but again i would never ever even if i had the money i wouldn't pay six eight hundred quid for a game nothing is worth that to me you know, you probably got an arcade machine for that, you know what I mean? So, Twinkle Tail. Um, again, it's Japanese exclusive. Uh, next up, this again, there's now PAL version, Tower Plan game, and we've got VV, or Grindstormer, as it's known in America. Um, real quality game, this, I think. Um, and another vertical shooter. I think the one thing that lets this down is it's got kind of a pastel colour palette which I don't think suits a shooter necessarily. I think if they'd given it a, like a bright, vibrant colour palette it would be sensational. However, I mean, it's still good, don't get me wrong. It's not the, you know, the, there's an arcade version of this which is obviously better. Um, but this is still a really nice game. Um, and definitely one to play if you... You know, if you want to experience it, I'd definitely recommend it. Nearly at the end now, and we've got Whiprush. Um, there's certainly now PAL version. I'm not sure about the genesis of this. Um, I don't think this is bad. It's it's quite a cheap game, and it, it doesn't sound, seem that well regarded. However, I think this is really good. If You know, it's kind of a, an R-Type style game, I would say. But personally, I prefer to play this than R-Type. Um, 
that's Whitbush. Two to go. It's been so long since I played this, I can't remember what it's like. Then we've got XDR. Now it's horizontal, but I honestly can't remember anything about it. But I seem to think it was alright from memory. Um, not the greatest box art, maybe, but serviceable. Graphics are decent. Um, again, I don't think this is particularly expensive from memory. Uh, that's XDR. And then the last one is an absolute banger, in my opinion. And we've got the Zero Wing. Another tower plan game. Another absolute stunner. Looks, sounds, plays amazing. I think it's fantastic. And quite nice box art, I think, on this one. That's Zero Wing. And that's my current Mega Drive shooter set. Like I say, there are others like Space Area, you know, Mercs, Rambo you could throw in, but I've kind of just tried to keep this to actual traditional flying space shooters and there have been a few exceptions I know but it's, it's quite difficult to draw a line anywhere really if I'm honest um, but like I say there are a couple of them which I, I do definitely want to upgrade and some of them which I've got absolutely no intention of um, and there are some other shooters that I haven't got that I would consider if they came along at the, at the right price um, but what do you think? Anyway, if any sort of glaring emissions that you can think of that I should be uh, looking out for, as long as they're not crazily stupid, wouldn't I? Please let me know. Um, be good to hear your thoughts, and uh, I'll be interested to read the comments. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you soon. All being well, sayonara.